So here we have our website. Localhost SSL Tester is the name of my website. And I've simply got a page called default.aspx. And all this is going to do is it's going to have a label on the page itself. And we're simply going to, inside the actual code for this page, we're just going to print out the user's name. So we're simply going to say something like, hello, user.identity.name, and print the user's name out. You might have noticed there's also a sign out button or a log out button on here. All the log out button does is it simply signs out of the forms authentication module and then it does a response dot redirect to make sure that it uh, refreshes the screen. The focus of this demonstration, however, is on the SSL aspects, not on the forms authentication, which means that I've avoided using the .NET 2 login controls so that I can show you how this works without worrying about the forms authentication functionality behind the scenes. So here we literally have two text boxes, a username text box and a password text box, and then a login button. This is of course how you would have had to have done it in ASP 1.1. In .NET 2 of course we have the whole login controls. So the assumption is in the login click event what we're going to have done is gone to a database, validated the username and password manually. I'm going to assume that whatever we type in here is valid. We're simply then going to say forms authentication dot redirect from login page and we're going to then go and point to whatever's in the text box but we're not going to store it as a persistent cookie. That will then redirect us to the actual details page itself. So at this point we're ready to, uh, to kick this off. Now if we view this in the browser Okay, so we, here we have our login page, and as you can see, it's HTTP, which means it's not secure. So therefore, anything we type in here is going to be read by anyone who's listening to our network traffic. And we can demonstrate that by using a neat little tool called Microsoft Fiddler, which is a free download that you can get from Microsoft's website. And it allows you to monitor network traffic. So we can just capture the traffic and see what actually happens here. So this time when we type in our name and a password and we press login, Fiddler is now recording this information, which we should now be able to view by looking at the session inspector and looking at the information that's been sent back and forth. Now, somewhere down here, we should be able to see that there is a form request being posted up to the server, and then inside the form itself is the current value that I've typed into the text box and the current password that I've typed in here as well. So you can see the password and the username is plainly readable by anybody who's paying attention. That's what we want to change. We want to make that encrypted. So if I sign out of here, I could do this by typing in HTTPS. If I do this, we'll get a warning here. And the reason that we're getting a warning is the certificate has been validated. The date of the certificate is correct. However, the name of the certificate does not match. The reason for this is the name is Miami, but we've actually gone to the website via the name localhost. So if we say yes to this, it will encrypt the information, and you can see we have the little encryption symbol here, but it's not what we really want. What we really want to have happen is to uh, change this to Miami. HTTPS, press enter, and this time there's no, uh, there's no, no complaint at all about the certificate. Everything's quite happy. So, once again, we'll go and we'll start recording. We're just going to uh, clear out. Actually, we can leave those in there, that's fine. And now what we're going to do is just type back in our information. This time I'll log in as Dave, password, press login, and hello Dave this time. We look at Fiddler, and you'll notice that all of these previous requests are now encrypted, which means we simply can't view any information about this session at all. So anyone who's listening to this network traffic, there's nothing they can do to see this information. It includes any query string values, any form collection values, any cookies, and so on. So pretty much everything is nice and safe. So this is working nicely, but clearly what you've seen is I've had to manually reset the pointing to the right place. One thing I can do is instead of saying view in browser, what I've actually done in this project is gone to the property pages, gone to the start options, and pointed it to the default URL, but used Miami in the actual title this time. The difference this makes is when we start this without debugging, it goes, instead of going localhost, 
it goes to Miami slash SSL tester, which means I'd only have to change that singular value. But of course, what we really need is we need the actual code itself to do the redirection to the SSL version. Now in .NET 2, you can't do that in the actual web.config file. You have to do it manually in code. Kind of the easiest way of doing this, if you only need to make a small number of pages actually SSL, is to use this use, useful property of the request object called is secure connection. This will tell you whether you're using HTTPS or not. If it's not a secure connection, anytime someone loads up the login page, what we can then do is we can go and prefix HTTPS, get the DNS safe name, which will give us the host name, and then concatenate in whatever is in the query string. Well, this includes things like the uh, query parameters. So I'll put a breakpoint on this and we'll press run. And you'll see what will happen is immediately it will redirect us to the non-secure version of this page. The request comes in. Let's make a little bit more space here. Okay, so it's come in. It is not a secure connection at this stage. The DNS safe host is named Miami and the raw URL is this information here as you can see with the, the root of the website. So if we step through that we can now have a look at the entire statement and you can see where it's going to redirect to. Press run and it should now redirect us. So we've been redirected automatically now to the right place and nobody can ever view the actual login page without it being encrypted. So this mechanism works quite well but it is a little bit of a pain because you essentially would need to put this information inside every single page of your website that you want to be secure.